good i nice to meet you <laughs> nice to meet you too i'm steve um i get yeah, early in the morning for you right not too early it's nine which is yeah perfect what time that's, is it there that's early for musicians yeah well my way i wake up at eight so okay. it's perfect it's it's seven in the evening here we're in montreal so you're in australia whereabouts in australia are you at the moment i'm in sydney how is life in Alex world? Pretty busy. Um, yesterday I played on top of the tallest building in Australia, which was pretty wow. exciting. Yeah, that, that was really cool. Um, and then, yeah, I've had a, a big uh, Splendor in the Grass two weeks ago, which I was preparing for for probably six months. So it just all feels a bit like a whirlwind at the moment, um, but a good kind of whirlwind. Like a fun one. That's, yeah, that's you've got to embrace all these things, especially after the last couple of years we've had, right? Exactly, exactly, yeah. So, so tell me about playing on top of the tallest building. What was that about? It was, yeah, it was, we did a practice walk up to this platform that's at the top of the building and it's like, yeah, got grates through it so you can see straight to the ground, which is pretty freaky deaky, but... They, yeah, and then I went up with a guitar and a radio mic and all of that, and they had a helicopter, um, and, yeah, I think I sang it maybe, like, sang the same, I sang Ride, Ride My Bike from the album, and I did it, we did it, like, ten times, and they just kept writing it, and I had different film, the film team came up, and then they filmed it, and then the helicopter came by, and the helicopter just took all my strength not to just like look at it because it's so <laughs> cool. And I was like spinning around and like at one point it like dropped and yeah, I don't know. It was really cool. Well, is 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 this the closest that Alex the astronaut has got to performing in space? I think so. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> the highest. The hub was really high. It was like, yeah, scary. Yeah. <laughs> And I had the harness and everything on, so it definitely felt like I was an astronaut. There you go. You're getting there. Yeah, getting there. <laughs> so so this, this album has the amazing title, How to Grow a Sunflower Under the Water. When did that title come to you? Um, well, I did it at the end. So I, I'm pretty sure I was on the flight back from my last recording because I've been recording in Brisbane. And so we did the last lot of songs and I was like, okay, now I want to try and name it. And my draft title was something about how to keep hope in a hard time. And I had like different things. I had just a piece of paper and a pen, like was writing all different words and people next to me must have thought I was very odd. Um, and eventually I knew that underwater the underwater theme had to come into the title because I'd run that through the whole album. So, and the idea of being underwater and seeing, seeing a new world that's amazing um, it, when you're having a really hard time and you start to see what's other people's pain and how to understand it and those things. So that metaphor really was quite, yeah, tight, but I needed something to, I don't know, spruce it up. So I was, yeah, I kept going how to stay hopeful when you're underwater, how to blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, we need some sort of different colour. And so that was when the sunflower thing came in. And that was that was a big game changer because that's how, that's when we started doing all the artworks with Julia. I did, it. oh, they're actually just here. So we started doing, this is growing up. She painted them and she gave them to me. Oh, but wow. we. Yeah, so we started um, like with the yellow here and it was the aim was to work towards because we did the album cover um, first, mm. so the yellow and everything. We had all of that and then we went backwards and did the single art. And so, yeah, it was kind of 
just the start of really going into that title and putting it through all the artwork and the colours and all that, which was really fun. So you mentioned this theme of water and this this album's not the first time you've kind of talked about water in your songs. So are you the kind of person that feels differently when you're close to water? I think so. Like I think that's been a big part of, um, sounds a bit lame, but healing for me. Like obviously with the album I went through a lot of big, big stuff and was trying to peel from it and, I then was in lockdown, so I had not much to do. And my thing that I do was go, drive to the beach and and go for a little swim every day between sitting in my room. And so one time I did see some people snorkeling and I was like, oh, I'll, I wonder if there's a snorkeling store. And I went to the snorkeling store and spent way too much money and usually I buy like lots of random stuff and it's it's quite bad. <laughs> I have to put it in a drawer or sell it on Facebook Marketplace. And I just was like, this is going to be one of those things. But I ended up going like four times a week. So it, yeah, it became a thing. And it definitely was a big uh, help during that time. And yeah, so I think that's why I just write about what I'm seeing around me. So that's why it came up so much. And then, yeah. Wow. Why do you think it helped? I don't know. I think it's something to do with it really ran parallel to my life. I'd I'd had these big events uh, where the people around me hadn't uh, had the same kind of events. And so I felt quite alone in that and really trying to cope with things that they couldn't understand. So feeling underwater was yeah, it, I was finding other people that were mostly a lot older than me who had looked after sick people or been through some stuff and relating to them. And, yeah, I think going to the water and going snorkeling was seeing this other world, seeing, like, fish and it was quiet and amazing and it was probably the perfect thing to, I don't know, see some hope even though, right. yeah. And I think underwater, like, that environment is pretty hectic. Like it's very like all the fish that you see, like they're trying to eat each other and like it's it's beautiful, but it's very like relentless and brutal. So like, yeah, it definitely wasn't like, oh, wow, look at these nice fish. Like I saw some of my favourite pretty fish like completely attack other fish and it was just like, <laughs> oh, okay. This snapped me out of the, Yeah. You're in a good place to do that, like in Sydney. I, I, I'm a scuba diver. There's a lot of water around us. <laughs> That's it. And I'm a scuba diver. And one of the, after I passed my yeah. my paddy, one of the yeah. first places I went to was Australia. And I, I right. most of my first dives were on the reef um, up in Cairns and around that area and um, yeah. Byron Bay. Um, yeah. Have you done scuba diving or just snorkeling at this point? I did it once when I was little. I did like the little mini kids paddy course and we like went in a pool or something but I don't know I'm a bit scared of it I think I like having the snorkel and be because well I also go snorkeling on my own so at um the beach that I was going to mostly is called Clavelli Beach have you been to Sydney yeah. Do yeah. you know Clavelli Beach yeah I do oh yeah so the the reason that I like that one is because if you go on your own you're you, you can't get blown out to sea so you can just kind of swim around in there and it feels pretty safe and yeah so scuba diving feels pretty scary but I should try it I yeah. need to like and yeah, get over it and with scuba diving you also you always need somebody else with you just in case you get into trouble so it's not it's not yeah. as so you don't get the solitude quite as much as you would maybe yeah so one of the things I've noticed about reading reviews and things online of your music is people seem to struggle to describe it like every <laughs> every every re- review seems to describe it in a completely different way if yeah you, if you if you're sat next to somebody on a plane and they ask what you do how would yeah. you describe it to them um I always say folk pop and I don't even know why like I think it was like a genre that I was putting on iTunes and I saw it and I was like, that's pretty fun. So yeah, 
it doesn't really I, I yeah I feel that I don't really know how to describe it either like I just write the songs and then they end up where they end up after like we add all the instruments that we think accurately represent the song and make it better so yeah it's funny I think trying to describe music is is tricky in general but yeah I don't I wouldn't say I'm a pop artist I wouldn't really say I'm a folk artist either I wouldn't say singer songwriter like uh, yeah I don't know I just feel like I I usually say I'm a musician and when they yeah when they try and ask me like what genre I just yeah yeah but I think I think it's great that you can't describe it and that's I think that's one of the things I love so much about your music is oh, it feels you. it feels very familiar in a way but it also feels very unfamiliar in lots of ways as well oh good <laughs> and, and that, I think that's what makes it unique and and really interesting and obviously one of the most interesting things about what you do is the lyrical content and you know you talk about things that are very sort of day-to-day but then you also talk about things that are like overwhelmingly life-changing and that seems to fit in with recent times you know we've been a lot of us have been forced to live in a mundane way but but Mm -hmm. on the outside there's all this crazy stuff going on Mm -hmm. do you think your do you think your style of songwriting just fits with the times or is it developed into something since you began I don't know it's funny I think songwriting never started as me wanting to be a musician it started as me wanting to talk about the things I was seeing around me I was in I like how I started doing songwriting was I was put in this class at school where they said you've got to pick a subject for the rest of the year and study this subject and try and come up with a project at the end so I was about yeah 13 14 and I chose songwriting and I don't know why I'd never done singing I'd done a bit like learned guitar for the past few years and loved it but yeah I'd never really written or uh, yeah I don't know where that came from and so I bought all these songwriting books online how to be a songwriter how to write a song and the advice in them wasn't great <laughs> but now looking back but yeah I I worked with kids in my year who were singers and wrote songs for them and then tried to record them. And so it was writing about stuff that I was interested in or trying to work out what they really were interested in or what would sound good with their voices. And and then I just always dove in because I wrote one song for myself to sing and I always dove into really heavy subjects. And I think the first song that I wrote and recorded for that project was about homelessness. And I don't know why, because I didn't know much about homelessness. And so it was a bit <laughs> of an ironic task for a very privileged kid to write about. But, yeah, I think that and then later on I, yeah, stuck with that, wanting to write stuff about the things I was seeing around me and some of them were, were big, big subjects. And, and And those songs were terrible, but I always wanted to use that, uh, I guess, uh, story form to try and understand all these things that were happening around me. And I guess when you're 14, you're starting to form your own identity and see the world and understand it and where you fit in it. And yeah. And I think as I got older and went through uni and stuff like that, it just developed naturally. There were some songs that were about heartbreak or friendships and stuff like that. And there were some that were the macro, you know, that were really me trying to understand what was going on. And it was, yeah, it was mostly a very private thing. Like apart from that little project thing that I did, which I I don't think anyone even heard the songs really later through, like I didn't show anyone any songs till I was like 18. So yeah, it was, it was a funny little journey. And I think now being a bit older, it was, it's like, naturally uh, I'm going to write about the big things that are happening and we've gone into a time where a lot of the big traumas and things are global and so I think that that has naturally kind of winded its way into lots of people are going through. It smells the same, tears warm my face when you cry, is your soul living something greater when the train pulls up at the king's cross stop 
so what is your process? Because the lyrics are so important and they're so, you know, when you when you listen to your album, you really pay attention to the lyrics. It's not just, it doesn't feel like background music. You need to be involved with it, I think. So as a songwriter, what that's obviously important to you. Is that where you start with the lyrics? Yeah. Yeah, so I was never a very good musician. Like, I wasn't a good singer. I wasn't very technical at guitar. The only thing I really enjoyed was writing the songs. And so I saw it as a very much a Sudoku kind of process where I'd come up with the idea, like I'd have a few lines in my phone or write a few lines in my little book and then I'd be like, okay, this song I think is about this. And then I'd try and do the guitar chords or whatever and then I'd fit everything into a structure and then I'd see what I was missing and try and make sure that I was using up each line to get to the end of the story. So usually, yeah, it's like about, okay, well, the third line here doesn't really make any sense. So let's cross that out, start again. What syllables do we need? What do we need to say? And how do we fit something in there? So, yeah, it's very much been the only thing. And, yeah, in the last couple of years, it's been, that's been the only time where I've really thought about the music as well and how that can enhance that process. And, yeah. I was lucky enough to work with the producers I've worked with from Ballpark Music, which is a band that I loved growing up and still love and just keep getting better. But, yeah, they've been really supportive and because they are musicians themselves, they're very on it with helping me being able to express what I wanted to put in the songs. Because before they'd, they'd be like, what kind of sounds do you want? And I'd be like, I just don't know. And they're like, do you like this? And I'm like, I don't know. And so, yeah, I think the lyrical process was the only thing I cared about, whereas now I really I think that's still the top thing, but I can see the broader picture now and it's nice to have lots of strings that are fun and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So so when you've written a song, who's the first person that you want to play it to? Um. If I think it's any good, I think I send it to my managers, um, Bill and Kathy. They've they're like, like my music mum and dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, and yeah, I I don't know that I don't record stuff very well, so I've been trying to improve. But yeah, they I usually send it to them. But it's funny, like they'll always be like, "This is great," or. Like they never really give me critical stuff because I think they know that I've I've never gotten into a recording studio and recorded a full song that was absolutely terrible. So I think they trust me that I'll go into the studio and have a finished project. Or if the song that I've sent them isn't quite there, they don't usually they they've never told me then because yeah, I usually don't record those songs anyway. So, yeah, it's a funny process. And you've got this great line on the album about Phoebe Bridges. Oh, yes. Who I just saw recently. Um, oh, lucky duck. And and that's about, like, her writing a song and you not wanting to listen to music because <laughs> you didn't write that song. So yeah. what, what, what are the songs... Are you the kind of person that when you hear hear things like if you're just out and about, you're just like, ah, oh, I wish I'd had that idea? No. And I'm not even really like that with Phoebe Bridges. I'm more, she's a very, it's a very different style to me. So I think it's like, it's yeah. more being, oh, I wish I could be more like that. Whereas like when it actually gets down to it, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't do that because I'm not her. Like I'll usually hear songs and this, that's what I've done since, I was little is I will be like, oh, how did they do that? And then I get a bit like, why did they put that there? What did it start with? That's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's more of an admiration thing. But sometimes when you're in like a stressed mood or something and you hear something really good and you're like, oh, my God, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to that person on the plane that you sat next to that was asking what kind of music you make, if you – if they, the first thing they're going to ask is, oh, play me something so they know what you sound like. Is there one song yeah. that would bring to mind? 
because your music is is quite diverse as well. How would you choose a song to to explain what you do? I usually pick quite a neutral one, so not one that's about a big subject. So I like, I mean, at the moment I would pick Ride My Bike. Um, yeah, and earlier on I would pick like Already Home because, yeah, I feel like, yeah, when you're sat on a plane it's kind of a, a lottery game of who, who it is and, yeah, I've got some songs that people might think are political or something so i try to avoid those ones so yeah I don't yeah you don't have, you don't have that conversation, conversation when you yeah. Can't escape. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so what, what have you been listening to recently what's excited you musically um casey musgraves because she was meant to play in australia at the um at splendor in the grass but the day got cancelled which was very sad um, I also had like a random 90s rock playlist with Third Blind Eye because I did an interview with a radio station that was interviewing them in the next week. Yeah, and I was I, like, I just, oh, that's so cool. I just interviewed them as well, actually. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so funny. They must be in the same like cycle or something. But, yeah, uh, I, I actually, uh, Sammy Charm Life, is that what it's called? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that song was my favourite song when I was about five, me and my best friend when we were little. And you know how they say, I want something else. We would, uh, when we were being brats um, and our parents gave us food that we didn't want, we'd be like, I want something else. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that was one of the songs. So I had like a, yeah, few old songs and then a few new songs. And then I really want to listen to the Beyonce album. I'm really excited about that. I love Beyonce. And then I also, Tyler, the creator, played at um, Splendor in the Grass and it was the best show I've ever seen. So I bought his record. Yeah. Yeah. Love wow. it. Cool. So you mentioned about singing that song when you were a kid. Um, yeah. In the video for Growing Up, you know, we see this little girl singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <laughs> things. If you could go back and talk to that little girl now, what advice would you give her for for life I think enjoy it like it's funny like that's what everyone says to me every step of the way but it's weird like you just get in this mode of like trying to do your best or trying to stress about something or stressing about doing well in year three or doing well in year seven at school and like it doesn't really matter in the end I think yeah it's like I had so many I was so lucky to have so many nice friends and have so many nice experiences when I was little that, yeah, I always just, I don't know. I I think I did enjoy it at the time. I never, I was a bit naughty and like didn't avoid having fun. Um, But yeah, just wish I'd stressed the little stuff less. Yeah. Um, So what's next for you? I know you're going to be doing some shows. And I guess you're kind yep. of touring the two albums, really, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so it's funny setting up the set list because so many of the songs I've never played live. Um, but that's kind of fun too. So, yeah, I've I've got a tour in Australia and then, yeah, hopefully get to come back to North America and Europe. Um, and, yeah, I've just, I've been doing all the animation backgrounds for the, for the tour which is really fun. So, yeah, it's just setting up the full show. I've got a band. This is the first time I've toured with a band. So, yeah, there's just so many new elements, which is really fun and playing some shows in places I haven't played before, like Darwin and stuff. So it should be cool. Uh, Hopefully get to Montreal. Yeah, well, uh, we hope you make it to Montreal as well or, you know, somewhere close by at least. But congratulations on everything that's happening. It sounds like everything's going really well. And I know everybody's loving the album. So, oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, there's only good things ahead. And thankfully, hopefully the, the world's going to be open up and you can go and enjoy it now. Yeah, I've been to Montreal once before. My grandma and I went there because I went to school in, I went to uni in the US. And so yeah. we went up to Montreal and I loved it. We had a great time. Yeah, it's a good place. It's a good place. Well, hopefully you'll be back soon. 
But yeah. um, thanks very much for spending some time with me. Uh, no, really thank nice you. Chat. Yeah, hopefully get to meet you in real life. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Definitely. So, yeah, um, yeah go and enjoy your day. And uh, Yeah, you too. Even in closing in on us over here, but it's kind of, <laughs> I think this is only the second time I've, spoke, I've interviewed somebody who's, on a, who's actually on a different day than we are. Yes, <laughs> it is Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, we're Tuesday still. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy your Wednesday and thanks again. Thank you so much. Bye, okay. Steve. Bye. I want to be a bright.